great to be here in, in Helsinki. Um, you guys are here in person, but our conversation is about remote work and people um, communicating um, with their bosses and, and remotely. So um, we were talking a little bit this, about this on the call the other day um, and about how Things have shifted a little bit. Um, maybe last year, uh, people were, a couple years ago, obviously people were you know, fully gung-ho about working remote, but now we're seeing a little bit of a change. W <laughs> what are you seeing? You're, are you finding some people want to go back to the office now? Well, I don't think remote was ever the right thing for 100% of people out there. Nothing is right for 100%. I think 40% of the people, they like remote. 40%, they like to be in the office. Now they can do that and 20%, they'll go to whatever company appeals to them and they don't really care as much. So it's that 40% that you know, we as an all remote company are going after. What about you? I mean, your business kind of revolves around people being remote, right? You can um, yeah, you sign up employees internationally. <laughs> yeah, I disagree with that a little bit. You know, I think uh, you know, what we do at is we help companies globally hire and globally expand, right? So I think Post-pandemic, there's definitely some people that feel the need to actually go back to the office because they feel like they'll have more control over that. And hopefully the tools that we're building will help even more people feel the trust in their team. But I think it's a matter of finding the right balance. And um, you know, going back to the office, like Quinn said, is a matter of like the founder, the culture of the company. And I think what we'll end up having is a mix of different companies having the right setups for themselves, right? Flexibility is going to be a big thing over the next few years. And so, um, are you finding that there's, there's a geographic difference between attitudes towards remote work? I mean, I guess since you have you know, so many international clients, mm -hmm. maybe you have some visibility into that. Uh, I don't think we see geographic differences. I think we see vertical differences. So if you look at like larger banks, for example, you know, they feel the need to have people in the office while startups are a bit more uh, you know, flexible on that front, but I think it's uh, what's going to happen. The way we see it is most companies understand that they need to adapt to the world of today, right? Like you can't force people to go into the office. It's not as efficient. It's not about a nine to five, uh, like nine to five anymore. It's about building a structure that is focused on the outputs of your team. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's it's really not been about geography, right? Because you have companies like Queens in the U.S. that are fully distributed and let people work from wherever they want. It's always it's been for us about the larger companies, the ones that feel unsafe about their workers, not their teams, you know, not actually being working when they're at home. That's the main issue we've seen for most companies. And those big banks, they're so big <laughs> that they have so many different locations. So any employee at one of these big companies is remote with respect to most of the people at their company. So even if they're in an office, they might be working with 5% of the employees at their company. I, I love it when people will, like force you in the office. And you know, the main thing I love to tell them is like, well, when you have an, uh, a building with 10 floors, you're probably not seeing each other anyway. So what really is the difference there? I, I do get that there's some roles that like need to be in office, right? And need to be next to like the trader or things like that. But in general, the way we've been thinking about helping companies go global and helping companies like embrace the right flexibility for their team is just understanding their needs. And I think it, there will be some form of clawback over the next few months, over the next few years, but it'll go back eventually to just being more flexible. And so you mentioned that you're hearing that you know maybe 40% want to be in person, or 40, uh, you had a d breakdown of different um, needs for different people. So how do you reconcile those differences? You know, maybe some people want to be home, but their team wants them in. How do you how do you navigate that? Yeah, well, you find people that like doing whatever your company is doing. So we're all remote, and we build tools for developers. You know, we, we um, have code intelligence, and I'm a dev, and I know that the times as a dev when I was coding, when I was most productive, is when I could get in this total flow state and no interruptions whatsoever for like eight or 12 hours. That's when devs are most productive. So I know that, and that's why I wanted to build a company that was all remote too. There's a lot of other devs that feel that way, but there's a lot of devs that don't want that, and they're not going to lie in the interview process. No one's going to interview with a company that works in a completely different way from how they want. So I think you just got to be upfront about the way that you work. We have this public handbook. We're inspired by GitLab in that. We talk about how we work and what it means to be all remote and how there's freedom and how we're async, and then we find those people that want that. And if they don't want that, then I don't think they're even going to come and talk to us. Yeah, we've, we found a good middle point for us. We basically, 
you know, we actually announced that recently. We did a pretty big partnership with WeWork, where what we do is we give global memberships to every single one of our uh, employees, our internal team. And what they can do is they can go to the office to any WeWork whenever they want around the world. And what we've seen is there's like clusters of people within geolocation. So for context, we're about 1,800 people. So you have like the London office, and I think there's a couple of people from there that would just say, hey, I'm going to the Covent Garden WeWork today. And then suddenly you'd have 30 people from Dill going to that, uh, that WeWork. So there's a good balance between like, when does it make sense to have a separation from home and to the office, and when do you want to go there? And you just need to build the right infrastructure to support your team on how to do it. And so um, are you finding that sometimes companies are listing jobs by time zone now instead of by location? I heard that that might be, become a trend. We try to. At least on the PNN side, on the product and engineering side, we try to have like so we built in a way that we have like micro teams, engineers and product managers. We try to put them on the same time zone just because it's easier for them to to work. I know you're a big fan of async; it's a little harder yeah. for us, but like maybe that's an interesting perspective as well, right? Yeah, I we hire without respect to time zone. We don't try to get teams that are all in the same time zone, and that's because. We feel it's important, even if you're in the same time zone, to have a working culture that supports being asynchronous. And that, again, means if you're working async, then when you need to get a lot of work done, you can get in flow. You have all the context you need. You don't need to bug someone else or wait on someone else for all the information. If you make it so that people have the context that they can work, that's what it means to be async. And then you can have people from any time zone. I wish I could work like that. I don't manage. It seems yeah. too hard for me. Like, there's so many things happening at the same time. It's like, uh, I, I think there's some roles that work better async, right? Like engineering works really well. Yeah. But like for us, customer support or sales, no way they can go async. Like they have to be in the time zone of the customers all the time. Yeah, and that's right. I mean, async is not perfect. But you also got to balance it against if you're async and you hire in any time zone, you can find the best people in the world no matter where they live. And not all the best people live in the Bay Area or in Finland or whatever. So it's all a trade-off. So do you do anything to help employees bond? Because you know sometimes if people are only communicating over Slack, maybe tone can be misinterpreted and what have you. So how do, how do you make sure your employees get to know each other? Yeah, so we went all remote right before COVID. So we so before it was cool. Before it was cool. About a month before <laughs> it was cool. And everyone at the time was like, you're making a huge mistake. And then we looked like geniuses about a month later. And uh, I think a lot of people got a, the wrong idea of what it means to be all remote in COVID. Everyone was forced to be all remote. And everyone was essentially antisocial. You couldn't actually meet people in person. Now, we did not go all remote because we're antisocial. I actually love meeting up with people. Our team loves seeing each other. And we actually have more quality time. So we will fly the whole company together to meet up twice a year. And we'll have a lot of different team meetups. And when you're with your team, you're not hunched over some laptop in a co-working space. You're not just seeing them at the water cooler. You're actually spending quality time with them for two or three days. I think that can build stronger bonds than just sitting next to someone at the office or having them be three floors up in the office. So all remote does not have to be an antisocial, and it, it should not be antisocial. Uh, bringing 1,800 people is going to be hard in one place. But uh, no, I think like, like Queen, like we built a lot. We actually uh, built products to help people connect. So for example, we have a plugin that you put on Slack, and you'll match people every week uh, with across the company from different departments so they can spend some time together. Uh, obviously, for example, it's the end of the year, so allocating different budgets so people within the same city can spend some time together for nice dinners and things like that. So um, you know what, what we've found is similar to Queen, people travel like within teams. Last week, I was in Amsterdam for work, and suddenly there was 25 people because 10 people from the customer success team decided to be all together in Amsterdam for that weekend. So I think people find ways to connect with each other. Uh, and you know we need to do our best to enable that uh, as a company. What do you do about talent that maybe, what if they don't live in a good home environment for being productive? I mean, do you, you, know, are you, do you provide WeWork? Memberships, or not, maybe not WeWork, but some some sort of office space, or are you just just operating on the assumption that everyone has a quiet workspace at home? Yeah, we, you know, I know you said you have that WeWork partnership. Uh, we offer reimbursements for co-working spaces for team members, and 
all of that stuff is so much cheaper than having one centralized office. So it completely makes sense. I think there is a valid concern around if you are very early in your career, are you going to get all of that interaction with other team members? And so I can totally understand if a lot of people that are very early in their career choose to go to an in-person company. But what I would say, even there, that's, you know, when, when we talk about that, we're thinking of someone who's in the Bay Area or in Paris or Berlin, and if you're a young person there, yeah, maybe go work at a company. But most young people in the world who are really talented don't work somewhere where there's a lot of tech companies around, and they don't have the option of going to an in-person company. And so for those people, it's great if they could work work at a world-class company anywhere in the world, that's an awesome opportunity for them. But what can you do, you know, for the people that do join your company and are entry level, what do you do to help them have a better, you know, onboarding experience and, and you know, a real, I guess, apprenticeship? Yeah, uh, well, we have to have team members that genuinely want to help them onboard. We have a lot of stuff written down. We also spend a lot of time with them. We get them together in person. Uh, not, you know, in an office all the time, but we have all those touch points. And also, you know, it's a self-selected group of people that do want that. And overall, we have less, uh, you know, junior, new to the workforce employees than other companies. And I think that's just the, you know, the reality of an all remote company. It's not good or bad, and there's no one-size-fits-all solution. So, I mean, there was a talent crunch for a while, and that might be changing a little bit, as unfortunately there have been a lot of tech layoffs lately. And I'm wondering how that could impact all this. I mean, maybe, you know, um, people were more demanding before about, you know, having precisely the right work environment. And are, I don't know, are you seeing anything change in the interview yeah. process about remote? It's interesting for us, right? Because like as a company that enables companies to hire, right? Like we we've been, you know, I believe a pretty good partner to help those companies in downsizing, right? As they need to just solidify their business. Um, yeah, I think that in in general, we're gonna start in a couple of months because people still have a lot of money in the startup world, for, and and if the market doesn't pick it back up on the fundraising side, I think you're gonna start seeing a bit of an employer-driven market. It's definitely was an employee-driven market over the last uh, over the last few years, which is you know it's great for employees, but uh, when such downsizing happen and companies need to tighten the belt a little bit. Uh, you know, you need to start uh, cutting some parts. You know, I was talking to well, Lindsay, who couldn't make it today, and you know, as they as they developed the company, you know, they they rolled out a lot of great perks, uh, but some of them were not used at all. But still, removing things that are not used is very complicated. So, in general, we're definitely seeing companies kind of rethinking their where are they going to spend their money. Maybe not all the benefits that they rolled out are being used properly and might not be as useful. So, yeah, I'm definitely betting on an, um, more of an employer-driven market over the next few years. But I think even in an employer-driven market, it's not as though all remote is just a perk to employees. Yes, yeah. it's very employee-friendly. A lot of employees love it, but it's also good for business. I mean, if you wanted to pitch it to Elon Musk, who is moving away from that, you could say, well, Elon, what if all of your employees had an office at their house that they could work at 24-7 and they have no excuses to not work? Now, that's not our pitch for all remote, but that is one way you could look at it, and it's very employer-friendly. So I think it's win-win. I don't think that all remote is some fad that you know employees demanded, and now it's going to go away now that it's a tighter market. It seems like some of the large companies are you know, either encouraging or demanding people go into the office more. And I wonder, you know, is that going to benefit companies like yours, where they, where they are more flexible about remote work, and people say, oh, I don't want to work at you know, giant company X anymore because they're forcing me to go in. It's trust, right? Like the reason why they need people to come back is because they feel they don't have control. They feel like people are not working as hard as they should, right? So if you build the right infrastructure, in our case, we're very KPI and output driven, right? Like people need to deliver on X and Y and Z. As long as they do, I don't care if they're in an office or not, right? So, but those companies feel like they have more control when they have those, those people in office, right? So I definitely think that a lot of people and I've seen it happen, and I've seen people working at those large companies being very frustrated, will leave their job if you don't give them the flexibility, but more importantly, the trust, right? Like, if you're a very talented person, you can work anywhere. Might as well work in a place that feel, like, where you feel trusted, right, and empowered. You mentioned earlier something about how you know, you're getting different kinds of employees who maybe didn't live in a major city and didn't have access to this kind of opportunity before. Um, how are you going about finding these people? I mean, is it just 
through through online job postings or you know if they're if they're not in your current city and within your network i mean how do you how do you find an interview talent remotely well Usually they find us. Our product is for devs. Any software developer can use it. It's code intelligent, so you know it applies pretty much any dev who's working in a big code base. So if they've heard of us, then hopefully they find their way on to see that we're hiring and see how we work. So we've got an advantage in that way. Are you but, guys open source on some parts? Yeah, we're open yeah, that's, that's such a nice trick. Like to hire great people, being open source for engineers is like one of the best things you could be doing. Yeah. yeah. It helps us hire people that have used our product at their previous company. So what we're seeing sometimes is other companies are uh, laying people off or downsizing, then they're like, well, what are the tools that I loved using the most? And then they'll think of us and they'll see us. And no matter where they are in the world, they can apply. So you just cast the net so much wider, and it means you get the best people from all around the world. So is your interview process fully remote? Yeah, it is. In a few cases, uh, candidates have asked if they can come and meet up in person. And yeah, uh, that's totally fine, too. Because again, we're not religious about this. We're not anti-social. That's not why we're all remote. We're all remote because we think it's a better way to get really focused, great work done. It really helps you hire faster as well, right? When the word is your playground, when you're hiring people just based on their skills, when you're able to set up interviews in such a fast cadence, not having to fly in and all of those things, it just makes the experience really nice. If, you're re if you have the right team, the right process, uh, you can really give a great experience to people, which I think you know, is better than making them fly for 20 interviews in one day, which some you know, big banks like to do. And so um, how do you go about assessing how productive your employees are. I know there's been some very controversial stuff like employee tracking software for, for remote workers and what have you. I mean, hopefully you're not invading people's privacy, but you know, how do you measure someone's productivity if you're, if you're not able to, to see them? Well, even if you can see them, it's hard to, <laughs> if you're in that mindset, to measure their productivity. In fact, if you can see them and if they're friendly over lunch and you really like them as a person and like all that, that can actually bias your judgment. And ultimately, you want a company based on trust and based on results. And yeah, that's really hard to build, but it's not a problem unique to all remote. Yeah, being very based on results, you know, being doing a really full jobs on OKRs, KPI, defining everything so that very unbiased you can say, well, you know, there's some roles that are easier, right? Like sales is a bit easier or support is a bit easier to, to quantify. But generally having either binary or like, you know, pretty interesting KPIs and making sure that you follow through and make sure you actually do, you know, do your performance review and assessment on those KPIs is what we've seen the most productive, right? And I think it's worked, it's worked pretty greatly for us. And something else that has always struck me is a lot more roles are remote than we actually think. There's so many accountants and lawyers and people that travel all the time, people who play basketball or football, they're all remote. You travel all the time. You know, you don't maybe call it all remote, but that's essentially what you are. My first job out of college, it there was an office, but I was traveling to visit customer sites basically 100% of the time. And so way more companies are actually making all remote work than uh, you know, call themselves all remote. I mean, do you feel like you're a remote worker? Well, Bloomberg requires three days a week in person, and we, we even have a Helsinki office that I'll, I'll be wow. visiting while I'm here. But, but, um, you, but do you feel like you need to be at the office to actually like, write quality content and meeting good founders right, and writing about deals? Sorry, if I put, you can also skip it, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I'm getting interviewed all of a sudden. Um, I mean, you know, with, with the reporting kind of job, they understand I'm often at conferences and, and what have you, and so we, we view that as, as in-person work, it, it counts. But, um, but yeah, I mean, um, you know, I'm curious if you guys have seen any data or any information that shows how remote first companies compared to in-person companies in terms of performance and productivity? Yeah. I have not. That would be very interesting. Have you? No, we, you know, now we just serve companies, remote or not. So like we, and we, you know, we don't really look at productivity data. Like it's more about helping them grow. But uh, again, for, for us, it's what we're seeing is companies just finding their fit, right? It's not about being all remote or all this. It's not about all in the office. It's about you know, based on like the leadership team, the C-level team, like what fits us better. Uh, but I think you can run the experiment in a couple of years, right? Now that you have fully remote companies like ours or Quinn's, right? Like, let's see which are 
the best performing ones per cohorts, I guess. Uh, that's, that's one of the ways to see it. But as of now, n no tangible data, let's say. Well, GitLab is doing OK, right? They crushed their last quarter, didn't they? Or I think so. I'm not sure. I mean, there's a lot of great companies out there that are all remote that are yeah. doing really well. I don't know how you'd perform that experiment, though. That'd be very interesting. You need to <laughs> you know, make it randomized or something. That would be very interesting. Or maybe if you're a public company and you measure quarterly results based on when the employees were in the office versus at home. I don't know. You do hire faster. I'm just curious I, 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 if that was out there. Um, you hire faster. I'll say that, right? Like when you are all, rem it's just much easier to not only find great talent, but just move across the different like departments at the company that, well, think about it, right? Like let's say you're a San Francisco based company. You want to hire for, you know, hundred roles over the next two months. You're still competing with all the startups around. You're still, you know, it's very expensive to hire there and you're limited to like who can come to the office, which is very, lim like it's quite a limiting radius, like 30 miles radius, right? So I'd say like, if the market is favorable for high growth, which I don't know how it is today, that is definitely a strong advantage. And so since you deal with a lot of companies that are doing hiring themselves, are you finding that companies have sort of a one-size-fits-all approach, either remote or not remote? Or are they saying, OK, certain departments, we want them in you know, for weekly meetings? Or what are you seeing on that? It's funny. It's like I talked to two different founders, I think, that even spoke today or are speaking later today on stage. You know, One of them told me, Engineers, I want in the office. I want them together. But salespeople, they can do whatever they want. And the other, the other founder told me the straight opposite. Engineers, they can work from where they want. But salespeople, I want them all in the office, like talking each other up and selling together. So uh, I think the answer is the same, right? It's like everybody builds a company and hires people to a culture that they're kind of like building as a, as a team. And that culture shapes up to be a mix of whatever feels best for you, right? And if it is engineering in the office and salespeople outside or vice versa, you know, it's, uh, it, it'll, it develops the right, you know, for most successful company, they, they build a model that fits really well for them. And so since you were one of the first to be remote first, I mean, were there any sort of growing pains in making that switch? I mean, obviously everyone else started, I guess, once the pandemic happened and there was the whole stress of that, but before you know, before even dealing with the stress of the pandemic, what were the hurdles you faced? Well, I mean, it's all trade-offs. So before we went all remote, we were remote first, and that was because when we were starting Sourcegraph in 2013, dev tools were not cool. Everyone would say, oh, you can't sell to devs. And so it was hard for us to hire in the Bay Area, which is where I live. We saw our friends going to Facebook and all these other, you know, many generations of trends have come and gone in the time that we've just been, you know, at this. So it was, we didn't really have a choice. Um, definitely, we've seen that async takes a lot of thought to make it so that you have all the context written down and so that you've got those cultural, you know, relationships built beforehand that let you just get in focus. But all of that, it seems like you'd want to do all of that even if you were in person. So it feels like a... It is a forcing function to do async well, but that's all a good thing to do. So, you know, they're growing pains in a sense, but I would not attribute them to being remote per se. What about you? I mean, I, I mean, are you seeing any challenges that some companies face when shifting from in person to remote? Yeah, I mean, luckily for us, we were remote from the beginning. I, uh, I've never worked in an office, so I don't even know what it feels like. Um, so <laughs> never worked in an office? Never. No, so <laughs> so I, I can't really uh, understand uh, the gap or the difference. But I, you know, I think the, the shift is hard, right? Like if you go from an all-in office, everyday together culture to like suddenly being alone, like you really, and that's why, you know, I think people in HR over the last two years were such the glue of companies. I mean, they always are, but specifically in those times, because you know, like accompanying people into a f 360 into how they're set up and how they work and their day-to-day -day was a big deal. So I can definitely see how companies have failed and tried to go back to a model that they know and they understand, specifically if your executive team is a bit more comfortable with that model. Um, and, but again, I think it'll be a matter of balance, right? Like what we're seeing is some companies that went back into the office are starting to lose their talent. So they need to adapt their policies again to something that makes more sense. Any last thoughts on, on the <laughs> remote work? I would just say it's not one size fits all. Some companies should be all remote. Some should not. And you know, same for employees. Some people want all remote. Some people want to go into an office, and that's okay. 
And if you're one of those companies that is all remote, that's 40%, maybe even 60%, because it's the 40% of the people in the world that want all remote, plus the 20% that could kind of go either way. You just want to make it so that you attract the best people in that group. You guys are in how many countries already? We have, I think, 34 countries, about 225 people all around the world. And no specific cluster anywhere, right? Like really everywhere. Well, the clusters were not intentional. We have clusters in Berlin and Paris and London and SF. And then just a lot of people you know, all around the world, too. That's, that's kind of like the beauty of it, right? Like the ability to bring such a diverse group of people. And I don't, I don't know how, how your hiring processes are, but just the idea that you are able to say, hey, we just want the best talent. We just want to be able to hire the best people. And you might want to open offices in those locations and just look for the best people in those local countries. But the mindset, one of the things we kind of came out of at Deal realizing through helping all those companies is, sure, you know, there will be discussions on whether you go for a hybrid model, full office model, but the concept of I'm just, I've broadened my horizon when it comes down to building a team. And now I'm just looking in general, albeit I might prefer to have 80% of my team with me. I will you know, take chances on people um, and give opportunities to more people around the world. I think that's kind of like the beauty that came out of remote working in general, apart from the flexibility. And you know, this is one of the trends we're the most excited about, right? Like being able to tap into the hundreds of millions of amazing people that are as talented as your barrier Area people or others, and just giving them the opportunity to work for the best companies in the world. That's something we're very excited about. And that is not going away, right? That's what we've seen. Yeah, that promise is just so motivating. I mean, personally, when I was learning to code, I was, I don't know, 11 or 12, and I loved that I, growing up in Chicago, Illinois, right in the middle of the US, I didn't know anyone else who coded. Chicago was not a big hotbed of tech at the time, but I could go on the internet, and no one knew that I was 11 years old, and also, <laughs> Like I could work with the best people building code out there anywhere in the world, and that was so magical. And then uh, the Google CEO came to town and gave a talk, and I happened to attend it, and I you know, go up, I was in high school, and I'm like, hey, I think Google's really cool, I know how to code. And he's like, oh, we don't hire high schoolers, and we're only hiring California. And that was such a letdown to me. But I love this new world where, if no matter where you are in the world, you can go and work with the best people in tech, and you can go work at the best tech companies. That is so inspiring for me personally to you know, have some small role in creating that kind of world for all these young people out there. And and also, I love as a CEO that we can hire those amazing people that have this crazy talent somewhere in the world where we would not have found them if we were just in the Bay Area. Do you hire high schoolers? Uh, yes, we would. <laughs> I think we, uh, we don't intentionally do that, but we have because, I mean, there. Uh, I also wow. <laughs> uh, work with this nonprofit called Hack Club, which is a kind of global high school age coding community. And the kind of things that kids can build, it, it's, it's amazing. And I think like, wow, I wish I could not have a job and you know, kids take care of sometimes to just go and code and you can get a lot done. And there's so many kids that have that so much freedom and time and they can build amazing things. So uh, yeah, we would. There was one time we actually had to check the age on a candidate, uh, and it turns out his parents were down uh, waiting in the car during his interview. But, look, look, the, look how like the how different the world is going to be. Like if you think 20 years back, you wanted even not that far ago, you, you wanted to work for the best company. You had to move. Now that you don't, now that you can just hopefully find the right opportunities. I think the, just generally the word dynamics, the immigration dynamics are going to be super interesting. And like, I'm excited for this new world. And I'm excited for what, how economies are going to profit from that and how the world is going to develop. All right. Well, thank you so much. Great to hear about remote work. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs>